to, to help us remember and celebrate Gene's life. After the service, there's going to be uh, some snacks and goodies over there, some, some more times of remembering and fellowshipping. During the service, we're actually going to have a time so you can tell stories about Gene. Good ones, hopefully. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we always start off these with some, some reading of some scripture. And, and so from Romans 6, 3 and 5, it says this. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that, as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we, too, might live a new life. For if we have been united with Christ in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Jesus tells us in John 11, he says, I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. St. Peter, in his first letter, said, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose great mercy gave us a new birth into a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The inheritance to which we are born is one that nothing can destroy or spoil or wither. St. Paul wrote to the Romans, he said, I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And finally, Paul wrote to the Thessalonians. He said, we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so it will be for those who have died in Christ. God will raise them to be with the Lord forever. Comfort one another with these words. Let's stand, and we're going to sing Amazing Grace. I was told they were wonderful grandparents, and my dad especially loved the expensive train set 
and gulped the entire basement that his step-grandfather had. The next year, he and his mom then moved with his Aunt Florence, who was his mom's identical twin sister. Florence's husband, Uncle Albert, and their daughter, his cousin Shirley, in Corbett, Oregon. The families enjoyed taking excursions together because the moms had both been school teachers. They often staged cute photos of everyone. Gene went to Corbett grade school with his cousin Shirley from first through eighth grade. He loved school and studying and received the highest grades in his eighth grade class. His teachers always loved him and one of them had him secretly learned the Mexican hat dance so he could help teach it to his classmates. His love of Disney, science, and potato chips were also evident at a young age. I can turn the page. Um, he had a subscription to a Disney comic book series and other science stories. When a new edition arrived in the mail, he would count out a certain amount of potato chips, then slowly and methodically take tiny bites while eating them to make sure they lasted throughout the length of the entire book. He loved playing sports, especially baseball. His favorite team was the Portland Rivercats. He spent summers working, mowing lawns, and trimming bushes on an estate. He and his mom then moved back to Portland, where he attended Portland High School. His life was full of many activities, including playing the French horn and the marching band. He continued to get really good grades and was offered a full scholarship to University of Portland, where he then received his Bachelor in, bachelor in Electrical Engineering. He then received a scholarship to Stanford and completed his master's and PhD in electrical engineering. He wrote his thesis on masers, microwave amplification by stimulation emission of radiation, which is what preceded lasers. For most of his professional career, he worked at GTE Sylvania in Mountain View, where he was a research scientist. From what we understand, he worked with lasers and colors. In the beginning of his career, he would often travel to present papers and was published in many journals. He had five patents and material for many others. During the warm months of the year, he enjoyed riding his bike to and from work where he accumulated a massive and eclectic collection of lucky coins he discovered each day on the street while biking there. In 1989, he left his career as a scientist to become a private math and science tutor. He enjoyed these tutoring sessions and fondly recalls one student who liked to hold a reptile on his shoulders during the entire session. His job as a tutor brought him immense joy and he treasured each and every one of his students. In 1986, he met his wife-to-be Christina, playing tennis, and they married in 1970. They enjoyed going to plays, athletic events, camping trips, movies, hiking, skiing, and playing tennis. Once they were married, he gave a paper in Japan and they visited the World's Fair. Later on, he traveled to Holland. In 2020, they had celebrated 50 years of marriage together. They had one daughter, me, Alicia, and all three of us enjoyed many family adventures and outings. He had a quest for experiencing everything. He took the family to the Summer Olympics in LA, World's Fair in Canada, a Major League Baseball All-Star Game in Oakland, in several Rose Bowls. Every summer, for almost 40 years, the family spent a week at Stanford Camp in South Lake Tahoe. He and I enjoyed playing in the weekly Wimbledon tennis tournament together and were often quite successful. He loved to go on small hikes and walks and even at age 82, would take short adventures to the waterfalls. Other favorite activities included going to Stanford basketball and football games and watching the Giants and Warriors. He loved trips to visit family in Sutter Creek, California. He helped with picking grapes, cutting grass, and breaking the leaves. My mom said he was greatly appreciated because he always did what he was told. <laughs> Even though at times he was considered a quiet man, he was very clever and witty with a good sense of humor and very expressive eyebrows. He was calm and it took a lot to get him mad. He was always willing to go with the flow and help others. He loved puzzles and juggling and regrets never learning how to ride a unicycle. He loved ice cream, milkshakes, chocolate milk, and anything my mom baked for dessert, especially rice pudding. He could learn or figure out anything. When I was learning the piano, he helped me practice and ended up playing better. <laughs> when I needed assistance with Spanish class, 
He ended up speaking and understanding more than I could imagine. <clears throat> when he felt my AYSO soccer experience wasn't seeming positive, he went to the library and found books on coaching and soccer so he could study and learn how to coach. For the next several years, he coached my teams fairly and kindly. Every year, our teams went far into the playoffs because he knew how to make the team work well together. One former player wrote, from the time he was our AYSO coach, your dad has held such a special place in my heart. He always made sure everyone felt special and seen. My dad will be greatly missed. He will be remembered happily singing in the church choir here at Union Presbyterian Church. And at home, singing along as I come clumsily play the Phantom of the Opera on the piano, he will remember, we will remember him carrying his beloved binoculars and wearing his signature hat to sporting and musical events. We will remember his loud whistle and emphatic drat when a game wasn't going well. We will remember his expansive and large vocabulary as well as his sometimes uncontrollable giggles that were so much fun to join in with. Thank you for being the best dad anyone could ask for. I feel really blessed that I was lucky enough to have you as my father. So in honor of his French horn playing, we'll be having our next piece. Thank you. 
was thinking about what to say about Gene. And since I knew Gene, my impression of him always revolved around music. He, he used to be a part of the back, the back row boys, the, uh, the bad seeds in, in our choir here. <laughs> well, you know, relatively bad seeds, as much as you can be a bad seed singing in a church choir. When I came here, Gene was always singing with the choir, and he was always smiling. And, and when Gene got sick, there were times that I would visit him that he couldn't speak very well, but he could still sing. Um, in fact, sometimes instead of answering, he would just sing his answers to the, to the nurses. Music has always played an important role in Gene's life, and that's why today, today is by far the most music I have ever seen in a funeral, because it's honoring to Gene, it, it's who he was. He loved music. He, and music is a, is a particular type of joy. I mean, he loved his family, he loved God, and he loved music. And so today, as we gather to remember Gene, to honor him and give thanks to God for his life, I thought it would be appropriate to take our text for the homily from a song, specifically Psalm 23. This is it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. <clears throat> he makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside quiet waters, he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. King David wrote these lines, and I imagine came up with the tune that would have gone with it. And unfortunately, the tune is lost to history, but we still have the words. This is the best known, most popular psalm throughout history, but sometimes we forget it was a song. It was a praise song to God. And I think we appreciate the psalm all the more because we know about David's life. It was a life full of adventure and risk killing the, the Philistine giant Goliath, and in that defeating the Philistine army when he was nothing but a boy. Then he became a favorite of the king, King Saul, who allowed him into his household, where my guess is, there he learned to read and write, where he, the songs he came with, came up with, could be used to shape our faith all these years later. You, I don't know how much you know about David's life, but it wasn't perfect from there on out. Uh, King Saul got very jealous of David's fame when David was Saul's lead general, and so Saul killed, tried to kill David repeatedly. For years, David fled out into the desert to avoid. Saul had to, for a while, pretend to be crazy. Life wasn't easy for a lot of years. <coughs> and even when he became king, <coughs> pardon me, life wasn't easy. easy. He had multiple wives, lots of kids, some of them not wanting to wait until David had died to assume his throne. And yet, in the midst of this hectic, dangerous life, David writes this song about his life with God. And it's a good life. It's a good picture. So for me, the picture David paints with his words is a picture of heaven, a place dominated by God's peace and God's provision for us. You know, David grew up chasing sheep and goats all over a relatively dry land. And so, you know, always looking for the next bit of edible grass for the animals. And so to have a green pasture, to have quiet waters, that's a picture of peace. It's a, it's a picture of contentment and rest in God no matter what's going on around him. David says God leads him towards righteousness, not because David's special, but for the sake of God's name and God's honor. David was blessed because God was committed to upholding David, not because David had somehow earned God's favor. And even when David was in trouble, which he frequently was in his life, and he fought battles for Saul against all sorts of neighboring peoples, and when Saul went crazy with jealousy, chased David throughout the badlands of Israel for years, God was still with David, and David could affirm that in song. You know, David had been a shepherd in his early life, but in this song, David reimagines his relationship with God as God having been the shepherd the whole time. 
David was the sheep. Even when David was being chased, his, his life seriously in danger, he could look back and see that God had been with him, God had been protecting him his entire life. In fact, David was so protected that God prepared a place for him to eat good things to eat and drink more than enough in the presence of David's enemies. God was this totally safe place to David, and he could sing about that because he'd lived it. And I think Gene could sing the same song. God really blessed Gene with a creative and joyful mind that loved lasers, loved creating something new with the brain that God gave him. I know he loved tutoring kids, loved watching the light in their eyes when, when they caught on to what he was teaching. Um, at least one of the kids he tutored, whose name rhymes with Amy Davidson, <coughs> um, told me that Jean had literally dragged her through high school, and she is still very grateful to this day for what he did for her back then. Now she's a teacher. He made a positive mark on her life, as he did to most people. See, what David was writing about was being blessed, even when life was tough. David felt blessed. And I'm certain Gene felt the same way. He felt very blessed to meet Chris and marry her, blessed to have Alicia. And I have to tell you, they felt blessed to have Gene as a dad and a husband. And I have been so impressed with the love and energy that you have poured into Gene when he was sick, that I got to witness. You were such a blessing to him. You know, for the past couple of years, Gene really was walking through the valley of the shadow of death. There were plenty of times when death was close for a variety of reasons, but yet God was still with Gene. And I, and I won't diminish the effort that, of love that Alicia and Chris put into making sure Gene was getting the care he deserved, the best care that there was. But more than them, God had Gene. God had had, had Gene for decades. Jesus was the joy of Gene's life. God was able to be Gene's peace and contentment, his joy and his purpose, because Gene had decided to follow Jesus. And so that last line of the poem, the song, is the stirring confirmation that no matter what, everything is all right because of who God is. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That has now become true for Gene. There is no more longing for a better, more functioning body. There is now no age. There is, there is never any condemnation because of Jesus. But now Gene is whole and healed, and where God had prepared a place for Gene to be with him forever. And I'm pretty sure that Gene has good seats watching the angelic Stanford Cardinals <laughs> playing the angelic Cow Bears because it's hard to imagine heaven without those kind of games. This is why there's red and white here. I hope you picked up on this. This is the, the cardinal colors, right? You know, Gene, Jesus was and is Gene's friend and savior, and it's because of God. Um, because of God's grace that, that we understand Gene is with God, not because Gene was all that great. He was. But even greater is God's love for Gene. Now, Gene wasn't big about talking about his faith. He just lived it. And he loved you all so much. His joy and his smile and his love for some of the best things in life, for music, made him realize how blessed he was. And we have been blessed. God told Abraham, way back in the beginning, in order to, that he was blessing him in order to be a blessing. And surely Gene was that to us, and more. And we are just here today, so what a life well lived. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for Gene and the gift that he was to all of us. Um, his, his patience and his influence, his grace and his love and his joy. Thank you for his life and, and the way that he affected us. I ask you, Lord, to bring to mind this day, this week, this month, some of the ways that Gene has blessed us so that we can give thanks to you again um, for the blessing he was. Thank you for him, Lord. Thank you for the blessing he was. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
participation. So if you have a, a story about Gene that you can share with us relatively quickly, um, we would all be blessed to, to, to hear that. Anybody want to share? Yeah. Why don't you stand up and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm John Foster, and we just always refer to Gene as our cousin. I don't know if I can do the math to figure out exactly what type of cousin is. He was our cousin. Um, I'm Shirley Foster's son. Um, the thing I remember most about Gene, um, he was probably the most exciting person that would come and visit us when I was a child, and uh, really was able to be happy and uh, excited and engaged with my life at every age of my life. No matter what I was doing, he could step right in and engage with me. And some of the first things I remember um, were just being so excited when he would be coming over to visit because I knew he would be happy, he would play tricks on us, uh, he would engage us all night long. He enjoyed playing with the kids uh, as much as he enjoyed coming to see uh, his, the rest of his family. In particular, I know a, a couple stories I wanted to share. One was when I was pretty young, probably early grade school, we went over to his house for Halloween and we knocked on the door and we, get, we got a candy and we turned around and there was a big skeleton behind us and we all screamed. And it turned out Gene was up on the roof, dressed completely in black, and was lowering the skeleton down. Once the kids came up to the door, so he turned around with this, this skeleton or witch was right behind him. And then he pulled it back up and he did this all night long. He was up there waving and smiling. <laughs> and also, uh, the gifts, like he would come over, especially when we were young children, with gifts. And our big game was we would shake the gifts and try and look through the paper and shine lights at it to see what it was and figure out what the gift was. And then he caught on to this and so he started double wrapping the gifts and <laughs> bringing exotic gifts. And uh, sometimes it took several people to carry these gifts in through the door. And over the years, we started with things like models and toys, but uh, one year he brought us a ping pong table. And we were sitting there trying to figure out what this was, and it was all wrapped up. And uh, another year it was a pachinko machine. And another year, um, tennis rackets, you know. And we just had so much fun shaking them and trying to figure out what it was. And then Gene just loved playing the tricks on us. And uh, I can't imagine having a better um, cousin and then when Chris came into his life, I was interested in medicine, and she worked in a hospital, and this was the most exciting thing that also had come into my life, and then Alicia also. So um, their family, and visiting with their family, and visiting with Jean was one of the most special things in my life. So thank you. I'm not sure you can top that, but <laughs> <laughs> I will. I've had a lot of practice with these mics. I'm Terry Williams. For over a dozen years, I was um, Gene's choir director. He and Tom Gutschall met me the night of my first rehearsal that year, and they put me at ease, and from then on, Gene was a model, ideal choir member. He had a gorgeous, gorgeous voice. He could sight read impeccably. And he was always on time. <laughs> Gene, Gene was a treasure. I loved him. I loved the back row boys. I loved my experience getting to know him and getting to know Chris. Time and, oh, time and, um, sorry, a little bit of patience 
just give him a little bit of support. And uh, he was just a wonderful man in so many ways. But I just would like to mention that because we had that personal experience of him as a tutor in our house. And then, of course, choir, many, many years of choir with Gene. Grateful for that. Parents to me. <laughs> I've been on many family adventures, so I cry a lot. I can't talk much, but to stand for days and play with kittens <laughs> in their house. <laughs> lots of um, wonderful trips to Disneyland. So lots of wonderful memories. He plays and did that to me, and I'm grateful for the kittens. I actually got to sit next to Gene every time we sang. You know? uh, people ask me what part to sing. I say I'm a blender. I just sing the same part the person next to me sings. And so I sang what Gene sang. And I didn't have to mark up my music like the choir director tell you to, because Gene marked it up for, for himself, and it was all in cardinal red, by the way. Yeah. And I just, just was noticing. I just somebody said that signature hat. Well, it sure looks resembling to the Stanford band. So, I'm really into music. We're good? All right, the choir's gonna come up.
again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's remain standing and sing greatest by faithfulness.
done watching the organized chaos that is, that is the Stanford band. There is a reception over here. You can greet the family, entertain each other with one minute.